أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه السلام عليكم my dear friends <coughs> you know the Muslim world Muslim people will not escape the tragic sad situation that they find themselves in until they free themselves from the clerics the priests that are profiting on the ignorance my dear friends not only have you and i lost the ability to think for ourselves but we have lost the ability of how to think even so all that we yearn for or require is just a guy with a saudi or arab covering over his head and with a beard to speak to us and to scare you with the fire of the hell and that's all you need and then you fall in line you are afraid to think for yourselves my brothers and that's the biggest problem we're facing i'm going to show you a video of an example of how people are spreading spreading ignorance nonsense and allowing you to remain in that state of ignorance look at this that if you were to follow the Quran correctly it would definitely lead you to following the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him after all he is the one who was entrusted to bring us the Quran so if we do have the Quran we're actually accepting it from him subhanallah now I draw your attention to many verses of where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly says whatever the messenger has given you take it Okay, here's the, here's the chapter. It's uh, the verse in the Holy Quran. It's uh, chapter 59, verse 7. Uh, what Allah has bestowed on His Messenger and taken away from the people of the townships belongs to Allah, to His Messenger, and to kindred and orphans the needy and the wayfarer, in order that it may not merely make a circuit between the wealthy among you. Like this is the verse, and then it culminates in this section here where it says, so take what the messenger assigns to you, whatever, take what the messenger assigns to you and deny yourselves that which he withholds from you. This verse, my dear brothers and sisters, is actually a verse in the Holy Quran that refers to the division of the spoils of war. And what the verse is really saying is that do not send, do not disagree with the division of the spoils which the Prophet has done. So if he has given you a particular share in the spoils, accept it. And what he has refrain from giving you or what he has given to others accept that and do not question it so clearly what this mufti is talking about is sheer nonsense he's misquoting the holy text this has got nothing to do with hadiths nothing to do with bukhari and let's continue whatever he has instructed you take it and whatever he has prohibited then stop it consider it prohibited and that is referring to the hadith now, if are divided into that which is authentic and not, it's a study. We need to study it. If it's proven to you that this is an authentic hadith. Notice how he's completely misinterpreting this verse, my dear brothers, that is really referring to the division of the spoils. He's completely in, uh, imposing the hadith on the meaning here. There is absolutely no mention, not even a hint at hadith. In this particular chapter so the next one now now he's going to put the fear of hell into you for not accepting Bukhari Muslim uh, Kulaini and all the Sunni and Shia hadiths right he's going to put the fear of hell in you he's again performing the job of an imposter of somebody that is leading you away from the real truth so Listen to this one of the most explicit or clear verses of the Quran that are actually a warning from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where Here comes he the fear. states 
and this is very beautiful towards the end of Surah Al Ahzab, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about those who will regret on the day of judgment. That's you who and believe Allah in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Yawma tuqallabu wujuhuhum fin nar. Now, this is a very uh, vivid description of the hellfire. And Allah says, On that day, a certain category of people, their faces will be turning in hellfire. Yawma tuqallabu wujuhuhum fin nar. What will they be saying? Yaquluna, Ya laytana ata'na Allah wa ata'na Rasula. Oh, we hope that we followed. We wish that we had followed the uh, Allah and we wish that we had followed the Messenger. All right, let's just stand still there. Again, he is now putting the fear of hell in you and me, my brothers, who refuse to view hadith written by Bukhari and Muslim and Kulaini and Mufid, whether it's Shia or Sunni hadith, we refuse to accept those books on its face. We refuse it, right? So he's going to now, he's warning you now, you're going to burn in hell for doing that. But let's look at this verse that he has just cited. Look at this verse. It says, Ya yawma tunqalabu wujuhukum. The day that their faces will be turned upside down in the fire, they will say, Woe to us, would that we had obeyed Allah and obeyed the Messenger. Once again, where do you see hadith in here? Because we know that we have to obey the Messenger. The Messenger is the one that brings the message. Right? How can you disobey the Messenger who brings the message? The messenger was was Jesus, there was the messenger Musa, there was the messenger Harun, there was the messenger uh, Dawood. There were mo lots of messengers, right? This, this verse does not even exclude any of those. It refers to the person that brings the commands of Allah, right? So those commands that he brings are the commands that we should obey, which is obey the messenger and obey Allah. In fact, look at the very next verse, 3366. Right? And also, I just want to correct one thing. He says, follow. It actually doesn't say follow the messenger. It says, Allah wa atta'ana rasul. Atta ata means to obey, not to follow. Right? Right? And then we will say, وَقَالُوا رَبَّنَا إِنَّا أَطَعْنَا سَادَاتَنَا This is, why doesn't he quote this verse? The very next verse says, And they would say, Our Lord, we obeyed our chiefs and our great ones. SubhanAllah, my brothers and sisters, what a revealing verse. Instead of obeying Allah and His Messenger, which is the Quran, they obeyed their priests, their muftis, their maulanas, the Muhaddithin, the Bukharis, the Muslims, the Kulainis, the Ayatollahs, the uh, Mullahs. Here we go. This is the verse that exposes these these people. And they would say, Rabbana inna atta'na sadatana. Sadatana, our chiefs and our great ones, our celebrated men. These men with the garbs on. We were following them, Allah, instead of following the Quran. Here is the great expose that lifts the mask. But he won't uh, cite this verse. He won't cite this verse, my brothers. Let's look at the, the, the uh, some more of that. That to follow the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in his ways, in his uh, instructions. That verse in the Quran did not speak about the Prophet Muhammad. That verse spoke about all the prophets. So if you speak about the hadith of Muhammad, you must speak about the hadith of Isa, the hadith of of Musa, the Hadith of uh, Dawood, all the Hadiths. In other words, the Old Testament and the New Testament and the Psalms and everything. In his sayings and statements, in the Hadith that is authenticated is actually a duty unto Muslims. And if you're a Muslim, you should be following the Quran in such a beautiful way that it would lead you automatically to following the authentic teachings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So the authentic teachings of the Prophet, eh, and then by implication, the book of Bukhari, Muslim, Kulaini, Mufid, and all the other Sunni and Shia Hadith books. My brothers, 
think carefully what this guy is saying is he's introducing a middleman he's asking you to take a middleman and what does Allah say about middlemen surah 39 verse 43 what do they take for intercessors middlemen others beside Allah say even if they have no power whatever and no intelligence you know the idea of shirk ishraqu billah to put a middleman there the ancient Arabs were not atheists my brothers the ancient Arabs believed in the supreme being they believed in Allah the word Allah was around they never condemned Allah they didn't have a problem with the prophet saying Allahu Akbar they believed Allahu Akbar but they believed that Allah and Al-Uzzah and Al-Manat and all these figure, f fakes, fake images that they've created were intercessors. They were there as an intermediary between us and between God. And what this guy with a garb and with a long scarf on his head is saying and with a beard is that you cannot access Allah directly you need the middleman not Lat, not Uzzah you need Bukhari you need Muslim you need Hadith books and he's inventing a science around his shirk my brothers and sisters he's inventing a science around his lies and that is just to invent a new middleman for you places that you have to follow Allah and you have to follow the messenger peace be upon him Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu ati'u Allah it's a very clear verse. O you who believe, follow Allah and follow His Messenger. Let's look at this verse. Chapter 4, verse 49. Ya ladina amanu Allah wa Rasul. O you who believe, obey Allah and obey the Messenger and those charged with authority amongst you. Why is he reading a piece of the verse? It's not reading the whole verse. And here this verse is not again. The verse is, if you read it in context, it makes believing in Allah as important, uh, sorry, believing in the messenger as important as believing those charged with authority amongst you, the leaders, the A'imma, those that you have appointed as your leaders. You should obey them if they are obedient to the Prophet and not follow again. Again, this Mufti is using the word follow. You should follow the Rasul. You should follow the Rasul. No, the word is you should obey the Rasul as you should obey Allah. But here it also includes you should obey those charged with authority. So if you are telling me that Hadith is based on obeying the Prophet, then where's the Hadith of the leaders? Because it puts the importance of the leaders on a par with the Rasul. And what we are being instructed with is just the, just the explanation. You should obey Allah, firstly. Then you should be, obey the Messenger, right? That is after obeying Allah. And then thirdly, you should obey those in authority. So if you don't believe, if, the, if those in authority do not obey Allah, then they are not to be followed. You get the logic here. Obey Allah and obey the message, the messenger, and obey those charged with. You see, the point I'm trying to make is that my position during this in this program, in this channel, is that we obey Allah and we obey anything else if those whatever it is obeys Allah. So if there's a hadith that is not displaying obedience to Allah or that is going against what Allah commands then it is to be rejected. So any hadith, any Old Testament, New Testament, any literary work, any work of any scholar, and there are many works of scholars, we judge them in accordance with what the Quran has to say on the matter. And if the Quran expresses itself on the matter, their wording, if it is opposing the word of Allah, it is to be rejected. But I think the most dangerous point that this Mufti is making comes now. Because what he's going to do now is he's going to tell you that if you don't want to pay Hadith, then you shouldn't pay, obey the Quran. And he's making a claim no less than such a terrible claim. Listen to this. Lily, if we don't want to follow the Messenger, then why follow the Quran? That Quran was brought to us by the same Messenger that you don't want to follow. 
That Quran was revealed by the angel Jibreel. It was revealed to the Prophet and it is being maintained and protected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is not the messenger that is protecting the Quran, neither it is neither is it an angel or neither is it any human being or any hafiz. The Quran is under the protection of Allah because what Allah says is Allah says Inna nahnu nazalna adhikr wa inna lahu lahafizun. We have without doubt sent down the message and we will assuredly guard it from corruption. So what you can see here is the weak arguments that these people use misquoting the Quran and quoting out of context the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take you on a gar down the garden path. Because if you only believe the Quran, you wouldn't need the guys with the long beards and with the garbs. And that is what they don't want. They can't let you be a master of your own destiny. They need to insert themselves in your religious life, in your connection with Allah. And they need to play that part where they can profit on your, on your religion. It's as Marx is, they're creating an opium for you, something that ke will keep you drunk and off the track. Whereas the Quran is plain and simple, and it gives you very simple guidelines. Look at this verse, 25:30. وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ يَا رَبِّ إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَهْجُورًا Then the messenger will say, Oh Lord, truly my people took this Quran for just foolish nonsense. And so let us guard ourselves against these people, these imposters that are creating a false religion for you. And uh, let us stick to the Quran. And only those words and writings and traditions and histories that we can authenticate and corroborate with the Quran or with what is clearly rationally, empirically defensible. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen.